Here, what I will demonstrate is how to get this wrench working with MS Physics. First of all, all parts that should move independently should be in separate groups. For instance, those two parts should move independently and uh, right now they are encapsulated in one huge group. What I will do now is separate them into separate, gr separate groups. Here we go. This looks alright. Now what I, what I will do is add the joint. We need one hinge joint over here, a couple of hinge joints over there, here, here, and uh, yeah, one hinge joint over here. What we also need is one piston joint over here. Yeah, let's reduce chain scale. Now, because over here, because the hinge joint should be movable along with this lever, we want uh, we want it inside the group, within the context of the group. Same applies to that hinge. I will actually add it inside that group. And we want one hinge along the center. We also want a piston joint relative to that piston group. Now let's connect them. So we want this piston to be connected to this shaft as well as this hinge to this shaft. That lever uh, to actually that that piece to that hinge to that hinge no it shouldn't be on it and to that hinge and to that hinge like that and this piece to actually yeah should be connect this piece should be connected to this piece and that hinge this lever should be connected to this hinge and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, this piston should be connected to this hinge so it can rotate. Let's try it out. Yep, um, this part needs to be set static because we don't want it to fall down. Now let's start out. Yeah, everything looks works properly. Now let's add the controller. So uh, the minimum limit for this piston should be zero, obviously, and the maximum should be something like like um, like 30, 30 millimeters. So what I'll do now is change this to millimeters and set from 0 to 30 alright works properly also sometimes sometimes the collision wireframe generated for particular parts doesn't resemble the geometry of the part for instance, if I enable the collision wireframe and uh, click play, we can see that the collision generated for that part isn't actually its collision, isn't actually its geometry, and same applies to that part and this part. And oftentimes they be start squeezing out each other. For instance, this lever, because you can see it's been squeezed out by by that part. And to prevent that behavior. We simply we can either the separate uh, group into small convexal collisions, or we can disable the collidable option, which is a lot easier approach. And uh, the collision isn't necessary in this model. All that drives this model is are the joints. So uh, what I'm doing right now is disabling the disabling the collidable collidable option for all the groups. 
All right, looks good. Now let's start out again. As you can see, like the collision is no longer being squeezed out, which is good. That's what we want. Works perfectly. You can also like go back and adjust the min max ratio and the starting value. We can see like the starting value should be 15 millimeters. There we go. And I press play. Right there, it's already in drives this slider to toward the center. You can also make it to work with a by pressing the key. Like for instance we can use key key F for instance to, to set the slider to control the piston. So key F returns the value between one and zero. And but we mo and then we multiply this value by thirty millimeters. Let's see what happens. Right now, I'm pressing K F. There we go. Also works very well. <laughs> 